Good morning, Scholars and staff. I'm your host, Stellas, and this is my co-host, Lily. Last week on Friday, there was a dance Azteca ceremony. I was there. It was a blast to dance with different danzantes. The reason I joined Dance Azteca is because it's my culture from Mexico. In Mexico, I also see Azteca danzantes, and when they dance in the street, I just start dancing. The ceremony meant to me like we were representing our culture and spirits that passed a long time ago. I really enjoy dancing because it's my thing. I was with a lot of energy, and even though we were all tired, we had a big smile. Now here's some clips and some interviews. So I'm here with my Danza Azteca teacher, Ms. Moreno. Why did you start to teach Danza? The reason I started teaching Danza, um, my first teaching job, I was a fourth grade teacher, and it was sad to me. Um, well, fourth, let me start with fourth grade. Um, you learn about California history. And to get California history, you have to start with Mexico. And there was a little paragraph that said, Spain came to Mexico, conquered, went to California. And when I saw that paragraph, I was like, no. Um, you know, students need to know what happened. Yes, Spain did eventually um, invade Mexico, but they need to know what really happened. And the kids, after learning about the history, they seem proud to know that their ancestors were scientists, um, astrologists, that our ancestors were very smart. So that told me, you know, I need to bring Danza in now. And we started doing this uh, just in PE. And, and then at VRB, I told Mr. Urquizo, Mr. Urquizo, I want to teach Danza Azteca. So I did. That's how I started. Mr. Urquizo supported me. And then when I came to Montevela, I told Dr. Nunez, um, Dr. Nunez, I want to do Danza Azteca. But to me, it made a difference in my life, keeping me positive, making me proud of my ancestors and where I come from. And that's what I wanted for you guys, you know, so you know your history and where you come from and be proud of it. Good morning, scholars. I'm here with Jimena, one of my danzante teammates. Uh, how did you feel about the ceremony? So how I felt about the ceremony was that there were, it was really fun, and there were a lot of danzantes from Castroville, Gilroy, Group of Salinas, and Sacramento, and also from other places. There, It was really fun because we get to try new dances. Why did you join Danza Azteca? Why I joined Danza Azteca was that like, it was really fun. And I just wanted to try it, and then when I tried it, it was really fun. Thank you. Now moving on with Lily with breaking news. Thank you, Dallas. I have some breaking news for you. As you know, many families are dying of starvation. I am proud to announce Montebella's film festival members were in a group to do a project called Food Race Waste. Basically, we are trying to serve food that kids in our schools will like to eat it or love to eat it. Montebella Elementary is starting a project called the Share Rack in the Cafeteria. It helps our school have less food waste. We recycle and reuse by helping our earth at the same time. Our project will help us in the world, or maybe can make us even live longer. The only thing we need to do is take one step at a time. Good morning, scholars. I am so excited. We have a special guest here at Montebella today, and it is Mrs. Vargas. And Mrs. Vargas is the Director of Nutrition Service Purchasing and Distribution for Alisal Union School District. So welcome. Thank you, Ms. Alvarez, for that introduction. So I just was wondering if you could give us a little brief explanation for the reason that you came out to visit our school site today? Sure. I actually saw a video by the Montebella students on Twitter regarding food recycling and how they're their future and they want to make an impact, a positive impact at their school and lead this project. 
in food recycling, so I decided to reach out to Ms. Alvarez to see if these students would like to spearhead this project for the entire district. I love our world, so let's take care of it. Now on to Brian. Thank you, Lily. On Monday, there's no school go because it's Memorial Day. Memorial Day is the day that the soldiers died and fought for our rights. Next Thursday is our third trimester assembly. Now moving on with Jess. Thank you, Brian. There will be a PTO meeting on Tuesday, the 28th at 6 p.m. Also, the open house is coming up Friday the 30th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And don't tell your parents what you're making for them. Now on to the ASB student body representatives. Good morning, scholars. That's better. Good morning, scholars. My name is Areli, and I am your ASB president. My name is Vanessa, and I'm your vice president. My name is Hyannis, and I'm your fifth grade representative. And today we will be talking about the following events we have hardly been working on. On June 4th, it will be the second annual career day at Montebello. Make sure to dress up as your future career. There will be special guests over to show the students their career and what they do for work. They will have a presentation ready for the students to show them what they work on and how they do it. And the students will learn the different types of careers people have and that not all are as good paid as others, but they are still equally important. Now on to Genesis. Thanks, Adeli. Spirit Week is coming June 3rd through June 7th. On Monday, it will be the color challenge. The color challenge is where you wear your... Monday will be the color challenge. It is where you will be assigned a specific color and you will have to wear that color. On Tuesday, it will be career day. On Wednesday, it will be historical dress day, which is where you dress about someone that made history. On Thursday, it is Twin Day. On Friday, it is Fictional Character Day, where you could dress anything about for anything that is a, that is a cartoon character, but that has to be appropriate for school. Now on to Vanessa. Thank you, Hennessy. And as I said before, my name is Vanessa, and on June seventh, we will be having the third annual Spring Carnival. And we will be selling tickets for $1 and bracelets for $10. There will be a, be the usual, such as a jump house, parent games, etc. But we will be changing the dunk tank into the dunk bucket. And we will possibly have two jump houses instead of one. One for the older kids and one for the smaller kids. It will be fun, so be good to come to the Spring Carnival. Thank you, ASB. Claudia Melendez has a book signing on this book called Fighting Chance. Here at Salinas, the book was about a 17-year-old Miguel Angel spends every minute after school at the packing shed, working out at the Al Sal Boxing Club. He dreams of becoming a champion so he could get his mother out and his five siblings out of this cramped one-bedroom apartment in, in one of the Salinas' poorest barriers. The book signing was on May 17th. Something cool is that she is she is a public information officer in this in the Alsal Union District. As a matter of fact, she even donated to our do donors choose fundraiser. Hopefully, one day she could make a movie and ask me to be in it. She doesn't only work at Alsal, but she all she but she cares about it. It's always a joy seeing her. On the serious note, in Salinas, police suspect the man who stole money from the bank. They caught him after he started counting lots of money at a restaurant. Let's not stay too long with me and let's move on. Now moving on to Shaylee with national news. Thank you, Sama. Social media is praising a delivery worker for helping an old man cross the street. The delivery worker has, se has seen that after the traffic light had turned green, the, old the older man had only crossed halfway. The delivery man immediately pulled over his car and hurried over to the man. He tried to help the older man using his walking stick, but after they failed, the delivery man just simply gave him a piggyback ride. Many of the social media users are trying to donate money to him for what he had done. Now on to Carlos with World News. Thank you, Jay Lee. Former chef of the White House has been preparing meals to the former president's and because of his jackpot lately, he is helping others too. As a White House chef from the past, he has prepared meals and dessert for Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, George Bush, and plenty more. He now has a restaurant, and his mom inspired him to buy a lottery ticket. He also won the lottery. 
and has been feeding the homeless with his famous White House meals. He brought a scratcher, learning that he won $250,000. He said, after some steps, he brought home about $180,000. He started using the money to feed the homeless in Dominican Republic. We feed more than 300 children through my foundation, Mendoza said. I know what it's like to be hungry. I told myself when I was a teen, if I'm ever in a position to give back, I'd do everything I can to make sure no one else has to go hungry, explained Good News Network. By giving up pizza to English workers for the government shutdown, more Canadian air traffic controllers started doing the same. In the big scheme of things, sending some pizzas to people that are missing paychecks is a small gesture. Peter Duffray, president of the Canadian Air Traffic Control Association, told CNN. But the message that it sends is a big gesture, explained Good News Network. Remember that you can be kind if there is someone in need, struggling with their books, backpacks, and even the grocery bags. Be a helping hand. Make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure to tune in to the upcoming newscast. And like we say every single day, Go Scholars!